How I Attracted to Myself $20,000. From the Edinburgh Lectures I had read something about the law of attraction, and from the chapter of causes and conditions, I had gleaned a vague idea of visualizing. So every night, before going to sleep, I made a mental picture of the desired $20,000. $21,000 bills were counted over each night in my bedroom, and then, with the idea of more emphatically impressing the mind with the fact that this $20,000 was for the purpose of going to England and studying with Troward, I wrote out my picture, saw myself buying my steamer ticket, walking up and down the ship's deck from New York to London, and, finally, saw myself accepted as Troward's pupil. Just as soon as there appeared a circumstance which indicated the direction through which the $20,000 might come, I not only made a supreme effort to regard the indicated direction calmly, as the first sprout of the seed I had sown in the absolute, but left no stone unturned to follow up that direction by fulfilling my part. By so doing one circumstance seemed naturally to lead to another, until, step by step, my desired $20,000 was secured. To keep my mind poised and free from excitement was my greatest effort. This first concrete fruition of my study of mental science as expounded by Troward's book had come by a careful following of the methods he had outlined. In this connection, therefore, I can offer to the reader no better gift than to quote Troward's book, The Edinburgh Lectures, from which may be derived a complete idea of the line of action I was endeavoring to follow. In the chapter on causes and conditions he says, To get good results we must properly understand our relation to the great impersonal power we are using. It is intelligent, and we are intelligent, and the two intelligences must cooperate. We must not fly in the face of the law expecting it to do for us what it can only do through us, and we must therefore use our intelligence with the knowledge that it is acting as the instrument of a greater intelligence, and because we have this knowledge we may and should cease from all anxiety as to the final result. In actual practice we must first form the ideal conception of our object, with the definite intention of impressing it upon the universal mind it is this thought that takes such thought out of the region of mere casual fancies, and then affirm that our knowledge of the law is sufficient reason for a calm expectation of a corresponding result, and that therefore all necessary conditions will come to us in due order. We can then turn to the affairs of our daily life, with the calm assurance that the initial conditions are either there already or will soon come into view. If we do not at once see them, let us rest content with the knowledge that the spiritual prototype is already in existence, and wait till some circumstance pointing in the desired direction begins to show itself. It may be a very small circumstance, but it is the direction and not the magnitude that is to be taken into consideration. As soon as we see it we should regard it as the first sprouting of the seed sown in the absolute, and do calmly, and without excitement, whatever the circumstances seem to require, and then later on we shall see that this doing will in turn lead to a further circumstance in the same direction, until we find ourselves conducted, step by step, to the accomplishment of our object. In this way the understanding of the great principle of the law of supply will, by repeated experiences, deliver us more and more completely out of the region of anxious thought and toilsome labor, and bring us into a new world where the useful employment of all our powers, whether mental or physical, will only be an unfolding of our individuality upon the lines of its own nature, and therefore a perpetual source of health and happiness, a sufficient inducement, surely, to the careful study of the laws governing the relation between the individual and the universal mind. To my mind, then as now, this quotation outlines the core and center of the method and manner of approach necessary for coming in touch with infinite supply. At least it, together with the previously quoted statement, my mind is a center of divine operation, etc., constituted the only apparent means of attracting to myself the $20,000. My constant endeavor to get into the spirit of these statements, and to attract to myself this needed sum, was about six weeks, at the end of which time I had in my bank the required $20,000. This could be made into a long story, giving all the details, but the facts, as already narrated, will give you a definite idea of the magnetic condition of my mind, while the $20,000 was finding its way to me.